Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Actress uh, Catherine Irby's with us. She's at the Cherry Lane Theater doing Ode to a Joy, a play. Uh, the uh, next couple weeks is going to be up, so go check that out. And um, So lo how long did you do Law & Order for? Uh, I think it was 11 seasons. 11 full seasons. And, and, then, and D'Onofrio left a couple of times, right? We or both did. Yeah, we, we were did. sort of a package deal. Yeah. Oh, I, never, I never saw the show without you, though. I don't know. I, I, I... Well... Well, we eventually alternated. You came back, oh, you did. right? Okay. Like, like you, you both left at the same time, and then you signed on to do more stuff, and you went over to SVU for a little bit, like a little. You arc. guys would guest star in each, you know, like you would jump over sometimes the actors. I did, yeah. yeah. He didn't go over to SVU. That was after after our show was done. Oh, yeah. All right. But yeah. um, yeah, we we left for a little bit, and then they asked us to come back. I've asked other people. Uh, That's from good. The, from that series about Dick Wolf. About how intense is he really uh, hands on with all that? I mean, talk about a busy guy. He's very busy. <laughs> he was extremely hands on in the beginning, right? Um, helping us set the tone and you know find the characters and right. um, and uh, then as we kind of got our feet and were self sufficient, he was sort of less hands on. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so he had other shows. Talk about a wealthy fiction. guy. I can't believe, like, every time I have those lists of the richest people in show business, I'm like, how come, how can you not be at the top? Eight yeah. eight shows in syndication, practically. It's craziness, you know? Where did you do all that? I mean, was it was it a certain area of Manhattan that you all guys always were, right? or was it just traveling all over the city? It was all over, but we had our our um, studio was uh, at Chelsea Piers. Yeah, well, oh, really? it's like it's Law & Order Way. They named a street after oh, you no guys. Way. And Jerry right, yeah. uh, Orbach, too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, if you go... That's where that, uh, I've done a couple of shows there. I got on a couple of parties at that restaurant there. Yeah. And you walk in there and it says Law & Order Way. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it must have made so much money. For, I mean, it is Chelsea Piers, I assume. So you would shoot like the interiors, the exactly. office and everything there, and then you go out and... Uh, exactly. Yeah, it was part of New York. I mean, it's a, and it is a part of New York. The history of New York, Law yeah. & Order. You know, in the, in the 90s, yeah. Did yeah. you, uh, how similar are you to uh, Eames and how similar is D'Onofrio? To uh, to that to Gorin insanity, <laughs> yeah. He that is all a character. Really, yeah. Really? He, I just assumed that character. he was a weird dude, you know, and that you he were like you... a really grounded, down to earth, you know, like. Well, you know, it's funny smart. you guys. You talk about it on the show and the characters. You're like, look, look, I got I got. It's hard to work with him, but I. It took your character a while. They write that. To, well, to my, get used to him. my whole character was built around my rolling my eyes at Vincent. Uh, oh, really? Because he did everything. In the beginning, they, he did every single thing. Right. Yeah. And, and so I'd just be behind him kind of twiddling my thumbs and rolling my eyes. And that's really how Eames he, came about. I would right. get sort of cranky. And um, mm -hmm. uh, they'd write me these, you know, smart one-liners, which I really love. So that became the relationship on screen, too. Yeah. yeah. And it worked. It was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll say. Uh, so you never worked, when Chris North, like, would do it, you were, I got a feeling, I mean, you were pregnant a couple of times on the show, Just right? once. Yeah, just yeah. once, yeah. yeah. And they would write you a part, and you'd come in, and real quick. Yeah, they were so great about that. They were yeah. so great. That's nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's so. good you get, get paid. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, you're doing a play now. Uh, do you like doing plays? I, I mean, I I assume you do. I do. I love doing yeah. plays. It's my first love, really. It's hard to make a living doing them, especially off Broadway. Um, but this is my fifth play in two years. Well, think about it. You're living the actor's dream. You made it to where you, you had yeah. great income, doing a great show. Yeah. Probably. Or you can put some money away and you're able to do, you know, theater. It's great. Yeah. And you say your daughter is getting involved with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What do you think about What kind of advice do you give her going into this business, you know? Because you know from doing it, if you have that bug, you, you can't stop them. They're going to try. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's her end goal? Like, do you do you view theater as the kind of the pinnacle of achievement acting-wise and then, you know, film and TV below that? Or how does that Not hierarchy anymore. TV's work? become, and a lot, Law & Order has a lot to do with it, TV's become a way more respected thing in a lot of ways. Well, it's yeah. it's really exploding in terms of the artistry. Yes, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. It really is it's it's exciting what's yeah. happening on TV. Um Yeah, so how do you had what do you tell your daughter like to set her goals on on what? Well, the thing that I'm really excited for her about is that she wants to learn how to create and produce her own work. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah. 
the thing that I really hope is that she, I mean, the thing that's the hardest for me about the business is measuring myself by other people's yardsticks. Right. You know, what they, you know, this ideal of a woman, you know, an age. And it's not easy to get older and yeah. uh, not be, you know, incredibly thin and um, all well, this stuff. Well, that's plays. the you, you, you have an advantage, though, because you look young, you know? I mean. Some yeah. would say, but yet. You know, they... It's difficult. It's, it's hard. It's difficult. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, you, I started to hear things like they all only see people in their 30s. And, you know, it's that's tough. Fr that's frustrating. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, uh, so that's why when you say my daughter wants to be an actress, mm -hmm. that's why it's hard. Well, she said, you know said she, so she writes then. Well, yeah, she has with her friends. She's in. She goes to this great school, LaGuardia, and yeah. she's her class is just this amazing group of really motivated, ambitious, in a really good way kids mm -hmm. who are really supportive of each other and they um, started a film club after school and they were watching films and then they decided to write one and film it and it's amazing yeah we're, we're, god are they more productive than me and my <laughs> friends were i know me too <laughs> me too <laughs> we're take another break be right back with Catherine Irby after this welcome back to the audio line show Catherine Irby's here you want to play at the Cherry Lane Theater, Ode to Joy. So describe this play you're doing. Is it a comedy? What is it? It is kind of funny, yeah. actually, um, which is nice. It's nice to be in something that people laugh um, <laughs> at. Yeah, right. Um, but I don't know that it would be called a comedy. It's um, the story of, uh, well, my character's named Adele, and it's kind of her looking back um, on uh, her life and how she got to where she is uh, at the moment that she's addressing the audience. And she's sober, but she's looking back on her life as a drunk and a drug addict. Okay. And the two major loves of her life, a man and a woman. And um, she's uh, a painter. Complicated. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, though. It sounds good. Yeah, it's really good. It's uh, written by Craig Lucas, and he directed it. He's an amazing playwright and right. person. And... Um, uh, Roxana Hope is in it with me, and Arliss Howard, who mm. you may have heard of. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, it's, it's, so it sounds like fun. We I, have a great time. Right. How do you, I mean, have you had, you know, drinking and drugging, uh, you know, you go answer, In my but, past, <laughs> in my past. Where you can I've, draw on some of that, like, depravity, like some dark periods, I guess? I guess, but I honestly don't know that I'm doing that. Um, right. It's interesting. Uh... It's interesting. I guess I am, but... Um, well, that's weird. Well, it, do you have a style of acting that you're married to with every single project you have? Like, you do a certain type of, I don't know, uh, procedure that you do with every role, or you look at everything differently? Uh, I do a certain amount of research. I do as much research as I can and, um, you know, come up with as much detail about the character as I can, but basically just... Uh, find where I meld with the character and that right. kind of becomes the character. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've been, I played um, Pat Nixon a year and a half ago in a play called Checkers at the Vineyard. About and the, based on the dog, the dog is the name of the play. Exactly, right, yeah. exactly. Based on the speech that he gave. Right, the Checkers speech, And he speech, invoked, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anthony LaPaglia was Richard Nixon, Dick Nixon. And, um, uh, and I never thought I could relate to Pat Nixon. I mm -hmm. knew nothing about her. And yet then reading about her and 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 playing her, I I was shocked at I just fell in love with her. Well, that's somebody like, huh. you know, an iconic sort of figure and it's paint her and her, Richard Nixon painted such a broad way with a broad brush by media people. Yeah. And then you realize, I'm sure if you do research, these are human beings. Exactly. You know? and there's always right. something you're going to relate to. Exactly. And there's got to be something about them that you like or whatever, yeah. you know, and uh, it's interesting. Well, um, listen, we appreciate you coming by, Catherine. Uh, My you know, pleasure. We're, we're, we're big, big fans. And, uh, you know, if you ever do anything else you want to plug, come by again. I would yeah. love that. Thanks. The, it's been very fun. <laughs> yeah. The play is Ode to a Joy. Ode, Ode to, to Joy. Ode to Joy. Oh, Ode to Joy. And uh, it's at the Cherry Lane Theater, which is a great little place here down in the village. Check it out if you can, and uh, uh, we'll talk to you another time. Right. Wonderful. Captain Irby, back after this. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.